The animal cruelty is off the charts. You do not drink the blood of creatures. We are one of the creatures. In scripture, the drinking of the blood is not about literal blood. No blood exists but for the spirit of life. It's the life force of the creature. They are not nothing. We humans are not nothing. We do not consume the life force of creatures or humans for our own self-gain as if they're nothing. Animals have a purpose. They're 100% innocent. We see all these films about serial killers and how they torture animals before they ever rise to torture and kill humans. Well, look at this going on. This torturous system upon animals and humans. Loving God. Be fruitful and multiply. Is not, multiplying is not about birthing literal children. You are to be fruitful and multiply in this one-way truth and life long before you ever have a child. And if you can't take care of a pet, a 100% innocent creature, but you shouldn't have a child. That protectorship in Genesis that Abel has is that he is not literally going to burn this little lamb before God as an offering. That burning is life. It is the burning of our calories. Abel himself is the burnt offering, the living burnt offering, as those lambs are that he is protecting. Because those lambs are there every day, living under safety and peace. They're burning their calories. Their burnt offering before God is pleasing. Under the rulership of Abel, who's under the rulership of this one-way truth and life of God that created Abel and the creatures. The Cain way is going to make commodities. I'm greater. This one's lesser. That Cain way, if we allow it, it will kill the Abel way within us. That's what it means in Genesis. The Cain that kills the Abel is about character. I just see from all these studies the number one hypocrisy that is there in Scripture, this law that's not taught, that is referred to as the stone the builders rejected, the builders of this world, the builders of man's laws, this one law that supersedes all else, all of man's laws, that we're simply to love this unseen, all good mind and spirit with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, meaning we make it seen. And we simply don't do to others things we don't want done to ourselves or our children, our pets, our property. How hard is that? Most people live this way. Why don't these people up top have been appealing to Hollywood for so long? starting with the books in 2000 to popes and leaders, Queen Elizabeth, then letters, emails, writing to the atheist groups, the LGBT groups. Let's just fix this anti-women, anti-black, anti-gay wars and all this BS. It's so easy to do. Most of us live this one law, this all of the law, the first law of God. Thou shalt have no other gods besides me. That Jesus clarifies. It's no offense. And we shall love this unseen, all good spirit with all of our heart, soul, and mind, meaning we make it seen and we simply don't do to others things we don't want done to ourselves. How hard is that? This is how we build the safety and peace. There's only one anti in that scripture, and that's anti living this one good way. No such thing as anti Semitism. No. No such thing as anti-black, anti-Semitism, anti-gay, anti-this, anti-that. My religion's better than yours. I've got more money. I'm smarter. I'm holier. None of it. You either live this one way, building the safety and the peace, whereby the, the brotherly love and the freedom flourishes, or you don't. You're anti-it. That's just one anti. No one will teach this. You see my frustration at times. I've been doing this for 20 years appealing to these folks. It's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Well, the rich man, it's not about the fact that he's literally rich. The rich man is rich on self. He's the greatest. Those people are lesser than me. I'm greater. My religion's better. All the us versus them going on, the deifying and the demonizing. Always deifying oneself and demonizing all the rest and blaming. Yeah, that's the rich man. Not, you can be literally poor, you can be literally rich, but the rich, 
They're rich in the world. They're rich in self and self-gain and status and things. Yeah. It's easier for the camel to go through the eye of the needle than for the rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, that eye of the needle represents that door into heaven. It's that one door. It's a one little door. We walk, that we are welcome into if we walk this one way into that one door that is there for those who have earned it. Because the word salvation means safety. And if you wish it up there, then we build the safety down here by honoring that first law. Well, it's going to be easier for a camel, for any creature, to get into the kingdom of heaven. To go through the eye of the needle than the rich man, because creatures are 100% innocent. He could have said it would be easier for an elephant to go through the eye of a needle. The same difference. <laughs> Animals are 100% innocent. They don't have this I am. They don't know the difference between that which is building of the good and that which is the building of the evil, that they are going to elect little animal politicians and build kingdoms and war and hate. They're completely 100% innocent. We are not to scapegoat animals, and we are not to shed the blood of animals as part of a ritual to cleanse ourselves or shed the blood of other humans that the world before the ones who are shedding the blood shall be cleansed of these awful people, right? We don't see Jesus going around slicing people up, raping, decapitating, building and building hate. And yet all these centuries of religions, the Quran that believes in the Christ, Christianity, Protestantism, Judaism, that that's that first law, have no other God before you. It's the same thing. We're being under we're being told that Lord Jesus Christ before the foundations of the world. In the beginning was the Word, and Jesus the Christ is the Word. No word exists without a mind. The Word of God is the mind of the all good that exists before the foundations of the world. It is the I am, the understanding of this all good nature that we are to express our substance in the world crowned with this all good mind to build this peace and safety. And by doing so, we enter through that eye of the needle, that door. Wherever it is way up there, it's there. And we'll enter through it, but there's only one one key that takes us through that door, and that's by simply living this one way. So, yeah, it's easier for a camel, an elephant. <laughs> it's easier for, for any creature to enter through that eye of the needle than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. They are self-exalted. They are rich in themselves. Their religion is self and self-gain. Thou shalt not kill means that you are not to kill this marriage between your existence in this one way. And if you do kill this marriage between your existence in this one way, you're the type who may go out and actually kill somebody. You'll kill truth. You'll kill uh, by lying. That's the killing of truth, is by lying. You'll kill that which is good for your own self-gain. People do this by appearing outwardly good, that they can be trusted. But they are using others as commodities for their own self-gain. So they're killing the good for their own self-gain. There's two end-all marriages in the Bible. There's the marriage supper of the Lamb in Revelation 19.9 and the supper of the great God in Revelation 19.17. You're either going to walk this one way that builds the safety and the peace and have that marriage supper of the risen Lamb, your risen mind, that you've overcome this world of their building oppressions and hatreds and antis and wars, you understand is about your character, not about your race and your your ancestry, a religion, you're going to have the marriage supper of the Lamb because you exemplify the all of the law like Jesus does. Or you have the supper of the great God because you have made of yourself a great God. You throw away that first law. Your life supersedes it. Your status, your power, your control, your money, your everything, you're the best. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Your first marriage is to your your existence to this one all good way. You step off the way, well, you've committed adultery. You're now fornicating with some other way. You have a different way of getting into heaven. And it has nothing to do with as you sow, so shall you reap, that we are to sow and build the safety here, thus reap it. No, you have a different way. 
that you can sow the words, I believe, I confess, I did the rituals, I joined the club, and now you get to heaven, and you can support war and hate and pedophile structures and cover them up and go through the world, just me, me, me. Yeah. Thou shalt not commit adultery. It's effectively the same as thou shalt not kill. You're not to kill this marriage between your existence in this one way by denying it. You're not to divorce yourself from this marriage between your existence in this one way by committing adultery, by going some other way. You see what that means? If you do not, if you do not, um, if you do not destroy this marriage between your existence and this one good way, well, then you won't commit literal adultery. You see, your marriage between another person doesn't have to be contractual. It's always spiritual at first. We see in the Old Testament, the first contract involving marriage is the bill of divorcement. Why? Because hard-hearted husbands who are mistreating these women, who can just throw them away from the family unit, for nothing, because of their own will. But that's not what a marriage is. You, uh, The true marriage is you have a mutual respect that both parties will never do to the other that which they would never want done to themselves. So you will never have a divorce. Well, in Scripture, your hands are your works. What are your works? When Jesus is pinned to the cross, his hands being pinned represents his works being pinned. His feet represent his purpose, that he cannot carry it into the world. So those are pinned. Your works, your purpose, pinned to the cross of empire, that you're going to do it their way. How dare he point out our hypocrisies? We're pinning the all of the law and the prophets, the living exemplification of, of it onto that cross, as they have pinned all of our lives onto that cross, that we are going to do their works and their purpose under their system. And if we don't, if we don't accept this mark that we are lesser and that they are greater, then, and if we raise our minds and our eyes to their eye level like Jesus does and points out their hypocrisy, they're not going to want you to buy or sell in their system. No. They want you gone. They want you shut up. Look at the number of people, not just Jesus, that living exemplification, but all the rest. You have these wonderful journalists, Daniel Pearl, Khashoggi, you have people throughout history, John Lennon, people getting assassinated, RFK, JFK, all of this happening because the empire system above wants them silenced. They have a different way. It's their world. It's their earth. It's their God. They're the great gods. They operate the world, their lives, without the all of the law for self-gain. That the Eighth Commandment tells us not to steal, that if we take of the spirit that gives us life every day, this light life upon us, that we may build the safety, that we have another day to do it over again, to build our character and good conscience, to help ourselves and others. For us to take of this every day without giving life to this good spirit in return is stealing. We are not just to reap and reap and reap all that is good for our own self-gain, however we're doing it, but then not sow or pour out that all of the law, that light and life and safety upon the rest, because then you're stealing. You're stealing from God. That's God usury. You're using this light and life and spirit, this savior mind where you can build your own safety, where you can also deceive others for your own self gain, make commodities of others. You're stealing. You're, you're, it's God usury. You're using it for your own self-gain, but you're not pouring it back into the world. It's the currency of God, is spirit. It's not cash. Gaining all the cash and not pouring any of the currency of God back. Everything we do is good and true in this world if it's built upon and serves the all of the law, no matter how much money we make. That's the cap on capitalism that the hyper-capitalists don't want. The cap on everything we do is that we are not going to do harm in this process. So the Eighth Commandment, not to steal, is telling us that we are thieves and we are stealing under this life and light of God by which we were created. If we are taking but not returning, you see, that's what it means. We are to pour out this unselfish love, the all of the law, 
the best we can in this world while we keep our antennas up yes we want to preserve our own safety in this world and of course life if it presents an immediacy of danger that's a different situation but we are not walking our every day to deceive machinate over others for our own self gain that is stealing of this light and life by which we have our lives and can keep our own safety but not for others though that we're gonna hurt them remember evil is everything you don't want done to yourself they don't do it to others all of the temples in the world the literal ones are dead temples that wouldn't exist but for us living temples that built them but they are made alive we are told when they are built upon and serving the all of the law we are the temples of the living god we are made alive in the spirit of god if our lives are built upon and serving the all of the law and the prophets the spirit makes us free god is no respecter of this church that church your color all the rest the spirit the way of the spirit the one way truth and the life frees us from all of these oppressions and all of these wars and hatreds and pedophile systems people have to have personal responsibility in the world it's not your ritual that's going to make you better or holier it's you there is nothing in that scripture and i dare for any of you to find me one thing in that scripture where a literal prayer or a literal ritual or joining a club or saying certain words supersedes the will the free will of human beings that we have this ability to give life to that which is not the all of the law and we have the ability to be that good carpenter and build it in this world Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and staff, they comfort me. Well, we walk that leveling. We are walking that valley, the all of the law. We are not self-exalters. We have our emotions in check and our humility in check, not doing to others things we don't want done to ourselves. And yet, the light and safety of God is being blocked out upon our lives by these self-exalters, these big mountains that just keep growing cutting out the light of God upon the valley. But though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, they are not honoring the all of the law of God as we are down here. They are not building the safety and peace as we are down here. We are vulnerable. Everything under this system is vulnerable that is not crowned with the all of the law of God. The Jesus, the Christ, the living exemplification that lives within us that we are to raise up, that all I shall see. The first coming was literal, the second is within us, and most of us have raised our lives upon the all of the law. Even though these oppressions exist that are there, that are upon the world, we've risen above them, we've overcome them. So even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil. Well, we fear no evil because we're not sowing it. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Well, the table prepared before us is the, the sustenance of God, the bread of God, the word of God, which is the mind of the all good. The reason why it's there before us is because we have reaped it. The reason why we have reaped it is because we sow it. It's not about literal bread or literal food before us at our table. It is that we are feeding ourselves. Our self-gain in this world is that we are feeding ourselves upon the all of the law and honoring it, doing no harm in this world. And this is in the presence of our enemies, of mine enemies. Well, what are our enemies? It's the false doctrine and the deeds that are produced. Jesus hates the doctrine and the deeds of the Nicolaitans. Now, I may be pronouncing that wrong. Nevertheless, it means power and control, Nico, Latin meaning laity, power and control over the laity, or any group for that matter. He hates the doctrine and the deeds of these folks in rulership. He doesn't hate them. They too have been raised this way, without the all of the law. We are to change the doctrine, and the deeds will change. We are to reset to the all of the law, the stone the builders rejected, the builders of this world. It's never been explained to us, this all of the law, that it even exists, that this is what the first law of God means. 
They cannot justify war and empire building and oppression and hatred and all of this going on for millennia after millennia if they explained what God is and what the all of the law is that most of us do live and we want responsible leaders. So the enemies before us, though we sit at this table and sow and reap this all good way, we do it in the presence of the enemy before us, which is that false doctrine, the false dogma, the women's oppression we are raised under, the gay hate, the black hate that gets pumped into our heads through the media and all the stories, the wars, the us versus them, this religion is lesser, this one's greater. We have risen above it. So in the presence of our enemies, which is this false doctrine that produces this awful deeds, we are sowing and reaping this one way. That is the table we sit before and feed ourselves upon. Thou anointest my head with oil. Well, that is because we have anointed or crowned our own mind and lives with the all of the law of God. My cup runneth over. We are the grail. Stop literalizing scripture. Honor the revelation of the dead letter. Literalism kills the substance or spirit of the message. It's about us. Beware of those that, that show themselves outwardly as holy and good. They're gilded grails, bejeweled sometimes. But it's filled with darkness because they're hypocrites. They're using people as commodities for their own self-gain. We are to fill our cup, our grail, with the blood of the Christ. No blood, no literal blood exists but for the Spirit of God, life itself. That blood of Christ is the one way, truth, and life, the Word, the all good way of the Spirit of God, that mind and spirit that we crown our lives with. We fill our cups with that holy blood, and we are to pour it out upon the world. It runneth over. We fill our cups with the light of God, and it shineth forth before the world. That halo that is unseen, but it, you can imagine shafts of light for this good purpose here and healing and revelation here and projecting it into the world by just exemplifying this one way truth and life people grow in wisdom you can't take the literal gold with you the greatest gold is wisdom earned and applied of this all of the law so my cup runneth over it doesn't matter god doesn't care if your cup is a rough hewn wooden cup or a polished wooden cup or a goblet or bejeweled it's what's in it that matters and if we fill our cup with hypocrisy or even a a drop of it just a drop makes the whole unclean well we can repent and restore ourselves and clean that from our character Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, surely this is true if we are sowing and reaping the all of the law of God. We have raised our own lives upon it, our children. We have raised our communities upon it. They demanded of themselves. We demanded of our leaders. We are under this rulership, as shall be, according to the book of Revelation. We take Jesus down off that cross and raise him up upon the world. He is the all of the law and the prophets exemplified that lives within us. That most of us live that we are going to raise upon the world. And they shall hear up there the stone the builders rejected. It shall be marvelous in his eyes. It shall be marvelous in our eyes too. And if they do not reset, then we know they are wolves in sheep's clothing. They have convicted themselves. We don't have to blame them. They will show themselves to blame. You don't have to hate them. They are exposed. We have raised up the all of the law, the Jesus, the Christ, that all eyes shall see it. The world shall hear. Most people are living this way. It resonates with people all over the world of all religions that we are here to make this unseen good seen and not do to others things we don't want done to ourselves, even if they don't say it in those words. Most people are living this way and raising their children this way and doing business this way. They will either hear and change, 
or we will know to replace them. We are the masses. They are there to represent us. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That open door is there for all of us. The only way through it is by sowing and reaping the one-way truth and life. Those that confess against the Son of Man, those that say they don't believe in Jesus the Christ, shall be forgiven if they do not confess against the Holy Spirit, which is not about saying, I don't believe in the Holy Spirit. Your confession is not by the literal mouth. When it says in Scripture that those who speak confess the Lord Jesus Christ with their mouth shall have the eternal kingdom or shall be saved, it's not about the literal mouth, because Scripture is also saying that it's not by your mouth that is your belief or your confession is by your heart and motivations, it is by your character. Those that confess against the Son of Man shall be forgiven, but those that confess against the Holy Ghost shall not. Which again is not about saying, I don't believe in the Holy Ghost. It's about not exemplifying the one way truth in life. That is the will of God, the first law of God that Jesus exemplifies. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, indeed we will. That's the one door up there. If you want it up there, you build it down here. You exemplify this one-way truth in life. It is the way of the Lord. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men, but of God. The circumcision of the heart is that when we have rising desires to step off the way to do things to others we wouldn't want to done to ourselves, to go down that road of vengeance, we are to circumcise that desire, cut it away before we give it life. It's what keeps the land holy. The land is only as holy as those that walk upon it. Most of us live this way. Why don't these people up top? So the way of the Jew and the way of the Gentiles within us. If you read the Talmud now with this understanding, it's not about, it's not about making cattle, quote-unquote, of the literal Gentile by literal Jewish people who are literalizing scripture. It is about us. It is about the way of the Jew within us and that rising way of the Gentile, those rising desires to step off the way or think we are better than others because we have a certain status or amount of money or because we're a certain color or we did these rituals or whatever. We are to keep our Gentile way, that Gentile nature within us, in submission to the way of the Jew. That's what it means. Do you see how this changes everything? We know how to build the safety and peace in this world. We all have the circumcision of the heart. Most people do. We are living this way. We are not walking the way of the Gentile. We re reconcile these things within us. So we step off the way and take that road of the Gentile the many ways. The wide gate instead of the narrow one. The one way. The wide gate. All the many ways of justifying stepping off this one way, not going through that one gate. So we start walking the way of the Gentile. That doesn't mean we cannot self-correct. Others will help us get back on this way. Thefts, fornications, covetousness, murder, lasciviousness all comes from within, not from without. It's not some energy from without that's piercing your mind that's making you do these things. These are rising desires that we are to honor the eighth day circumcision covenant and cut those away. You live this way. It keeps the land holy. You are the Jew under God's definition. It doesn't matter your sect or your race or your rituals. You're either walking this way to build the safety and the peace. Thus the freedom flourishes, the brotherly love, or you don't. Why don't our leaders who say they love God, these hypocrites, they may change. In scripture, it's the Jew and the Gentile paradigm. The Jew, the true Jew that walks this way, the Gentile, the false Jew. It's the wolf in sheep's clothing. The book of Revelation is warning us to beware of the false Jew. Those that will say they love God, that they are sheep. They will show themselves to be sheep, but they are wolves. They are not honoring the first law of God. Beware of the false Jew. There is a difference, and it's not about being Jewish. Remember, the word Jew, before it ever had a J, was you. I-E, I-U, I think, or I-E-U. There were several different ways of spelling it, but it was you. It's the good you, or the good Muslim, or the good king. Versus the false you, or the false Muslim, or false Christian, or false king, or false priest. 
the true one is the one that shall have the kingdom. They are walking this one good way, the one way, truth, and life, like the good carpenter. Whether or not you say you believe in him, it is your confession in the Holy Ghost that you have not denied this. You are living this way. They are just words. The Lord Jesus Christ before the foundation of the world, before any of this existed, does not care of our literal words, our rituals, is that we're actually living this way and building the safety and peace and honoring the eight-day circumcision covenant, which is the restoration. We restore ourselves. That's the restoration of Israel and the restoration of the nations. That the tree shall bear the fruit. That water that is the spirit, that waters the tree, that bears the good fruit. Well, where is it? It's not happened. We can, we can bring it. We can we can blossom this in the world just by raising up the all of the law. They will either change, or we know they are wolves in sheep's clothing, and we remove them. There should be no offense in this first law of God and what it means that's been buried for 2,000 years that we are to resurrect upon the world. The stone the builders rejected, it shall be marvelous in his eyes. It shall be marvelous in our eyes too. Most of us are living this way. All right, folks, I love you. You take good care, and God bless that God is in us. The healing is before us. It'll be as quick as we want, or not. Just get it out there. I love you so much. Take care.